In today's show, we've got news about Boo Bash coming to Walt Disney World. Hotels of the Disneyland Resort are opening. Headline news, meetups, trivia, and so much more all in today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times. And get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. All right, everybody. Before we get going, I want to let you know about our good friends over at Destinations to Travel. Whether you're planning a family vacation, a romantic getaway, destination wedding cruise, whatever. When the time comes for travel to be back open, you're going to want to already be planning your vacation. And our friends at Destinations to Travel are the best of the best, and they're looking forward to talking to you. Now, the thing you want to do is you want to go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash travel, and there's a quick little survey to let them know what you're thinking about doing for your next travel experience. And uh, they're gonna we're going to send that to them, and then someone from Destinations to Travel will get in touch with you. Now, here's the thing. I know not every place is open, but you want to start uh, planning your travel now. And you want to use our friends, Destination Travel, because A, they don't cost you a dime. And B, if you get somewhere and maybe the regulations for CDC from uh, COVID has changed, you're going to want to know that. And these people stay on top of all that. So you don't have to sweat all that. These people will help take care of you and keep you safe. And uh, help save you time, money, and frustration. So, thank you to our friends and sponsors over Destinations to Travel. Uh, go over to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash travel. Sign up and uh, start planning your next vacation up today. Should mention there are a lot of discounts going on right now, too. I think one of them is uh, 25% off hotel rooms. Uh, so, you're going to want to make sure that you hook up with uh, a travel agent. Take advantage of some of these discounts. Sweet. Absolutely. How are you doing, buddy? What to do this weekend? Uh, nothing exciting this weekend, but I did go to our favorite restaurant, <laughs> Ravello. Uh, oh, Ravello? Yeah, I'm actually going on Friday. Very yeah. excited. Yeah, so uh, Ravello's got five new menu items. Uh, uh, Two two appetizers. One's a salad. One is an Italian version of like a hamachi. Um, I'm so sorry, what hamachi? Kind of tuna raw. Oh, okay. Yellow I'm sorry, hamachi. I'm, like, hamachi. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Kind of like sushi, yeah. but an Italian yeah. version of that. Cool. Uh, you're gonna want to get the veal rotelli. It's a veal uh, rolled up in veal sausage mm. with a marsala sauce. <laughs> damn good it is spectacular uh and now they're running a dessert special so each night uh the uh, chef robbie does a a dessert special so if you know that's not enough so yeah (laughs) so yeah you're gonna want to try these things there's five new menu items listen just go try it once try it once if you don't like it let me know i know who to get it fixed yeah, we'll fix it. We'll get it fixed. I have people that can fix it, but I don't think you're going to come back with that. I think I, you're going to come I, back and say, "Oh, that was very good, Mister Castle." That was tasty. Yeah, that was yeah. that was very tasty. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, my wife and I took uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we came back yesterday for a a four day weekend to kind of celebrate our anniversary, which is this coming Thursday, fifteen years. Woo! <laughs> yeah so we had a great time and we didn't go to disney this weekend but we did go to bucky's Ooh. have you been to bucky's yet uh probably a long time ago i've not been re- of recent oh. i've heard they really up their game oh my god it's like it's like walking into a wawa walmart 7-eleven 7-eleven <laughs> Cracker Barrel barbecue joint. Yeah. I, it was amazing. I yeah. mean, we we spent so much money and bought so much stuff. But I mean, like, it's crazy. Like, one of the crazy things, okay, so like, a lot of you have seen the show, and this, uh, you know, for the viewing audience, this is great. For the people yeah. listening, I'm really sorry. But this 
is a uh, is a 27, 28 ounce, you know, tumbler. It's what I keep my water in. It's got a Brown's mug thing. And I paid like uh, 20 some odd bucks for it because it's Brown's and all that good stuff. For like $13, I got a 40 ounce tumbler. I'm like, that's did, five glasses of water. I could did, drink two of those it, in my did water. Did it come bag. with a urinal? <laughs> it, it is, it's its own urinal. <laughs> in so, one side, uh, out the other? <laughs> We tried. We tried uh, their pulled pork. Uh, we tried their brisket. We had there is a. a yeah, I've heard bar- their barbecue is pretty good. They had a barbecue sausage on a yeah. stick, bro. And I wow. beaver beaver nuggets. <laughs> it's crack. It's a literal crack. <laughs> like my wife and I have been keto for a while, and we've been really mm. trying to watch what we were doing, and we kind of let loose this weekend. So yeah, we had a great. Sure. We bought this uh, big bag of, of beaver nuggets, and and beaver nuggets for those of you who don't know are like they taste like caramel corn is what mm. they taste like without all the corn pop, popcorn crap. They just taste like caramel corn. We probably went through three fourths of the bag on the way home for an hour and twenty minute drive to home. Turned the car around, went back on uh, the oh second bag. <laughs> it, it was amazing. We had a blast. We had this total blast. So uh Bucky's I'm a big fan. I got a little sticker and put it on the back of my computer. So it's it's if it makes the back of the computer it's important. So yeah. uh, it's like a whole bucket. the uh chat room is asking if they have anything that's dairy free. Uh, highly unlikely at Bucky's <laughs> Probably. I mean, they've got like, well, yeah, everything that I mentioned is yeah. dairy free. Yeah. Like all the jerky, they have like a jerky bar, all the barbecue. I mean, it's none of that has dairy in it. Yeah. But I, mean, I wonder if they'll make them to uh, Florida, like central Florida, like the Wawa, the Wawa invasion that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the one, the one that we went to, the one that we went to is near Daytona. Yeah, that, that, that that's what I'm saying down here. They, they They'd be south. stupid enough to build one down here. I, I think they're along the, the yeah, I think they're primarily along the 95 uh, corridor. Yeah, they'd be crazy not to. Yeah. But yeah. uh I don't know. They had we didn't try it, but they have like fudge. I don't know if there's dairy and fudge, but good god, it was just they had they had passable banana pudding. I'm a banana pudding snob. I mean, look at me. Um, it was passable, but I don't I like enjoy- bananas and pudding. <sighs> That's because you're you're a Yankee. You didn't grow up in the South. <laughs> Nana pudding is an art form. And I, you know, but there's banana pudding. And that's yeah, Nana pudding is where it's at. I'm All telling right. you. You have to yeah. enlighten me on the difference. <laughs> <laughs> one one is bananas in pudding with Nilla wafers. One is, you know, five hundred pounds of a pudding substance with Nilla wafers and bananas that somebody's grandma or mom makes, and it you know it weighs a thousand pounds and it's worth every. I mean, you stick a spoon in it, just oh, it's oh, it's <laughs> glorious. Okay. Uh, all right. Anything else we need to get to? Now I'm hungry. Crap. All right. Anything else you need to get to? Nope, that's it. Let's... All right, then let's get into the news. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Get your air horn ready, Tony, because we have our first real sign that Disney is coming back. A Halloween-themed Disney After Hours Boo Bash is coming to the Magic Kingdom this fall. <laughs> Since we're halfway to Halloween, uh, Disney Spookly is excited to announce a new Halloween-themed Disney After Hours event coming this fall to the Magic Kingdom. Disney After Hours Boo Bash will take place on select nights, August 10th, August 10th through October 31st. Halloween in August, my friends. From 9 p.m. until midnight. I don't like that time frame, but okay, fine. Spooky festivals will include Halloween-themed cavalcades, character sightings, special performances from the Cadaver Dance, decor, lighting, music, treat stops with plenty of candy, and so much more. Sounds awfully familiar. <laughs> Disney After Hours Boo Bash tickets will grant admission to the Magic Kingdom Park as early as 7 p.m. without the need for a day park ticket or Disney Park Pass theme park reservation, giving guests time to enjoy even more of the favorites. Guests young and old and immortal 
can dress in costume for the occasion and get their fill of Halloween candy. As an important reminder, now here's where it gets crazy. Costume masks are not permitted by adults. They can only be worn by children younger than 14. In addition, all guests are required to wear appropriate face coverings during the event. What if my mask is a face mask? Stop and think about that phrase. You have to wear a mask to get in. Face coverings must be worn, but your costume cannot have a mask. Before guests arrive, check Disney's Know Before You Go page at Disney. Oh, my God. Uh, just go to the Know Before You yeah. Go page. Uh, in case you aren't familiar with Disney After Hours, it's a special event that's open to a limited number of guests. After normal park operating hours, the experience offers low wait times with uh, more than 20 attractions like the Haunted Mansion and Space Mountain to newer favorites like the Seven Doors Mine Train. It's a ghostly good time for all. Tickets will go on sale uh, in June with an early purchase window available to guests of select Walt Disney World Resort hotels. Stay tuned for more dates to come. We'll share additional information about Disney After Hours Boo Bash as they become available. So stay tuned. I cannot wait. Uh, some event nights, though, in August and September will be from 9.30 until 12.30. Probably on weekends, if I had yeah. to guess. So make sure you check your local listings. Please do. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, Disney Parks blog posted a whole uh, ton of pictures about the new Avenger, Cam uh, Avenger Campus cast member assemble new cast costumes. Easy for you to say. Whew. Okay. Uh, and like I said, uh, still, a lot of these costumes are apron-centric still. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Avenger, Ca uh, Avenger Campus cast members have assembled at Disney's California Adventure Park. Uh, their mission is gear up in their brand new costumes as they prepare for the Avenger Campus to begin uh, recruiting guests on June 4th. So we have an opening day. That's good. Yeah. Uh, taking on unique roles, cast members in Adventure Campus are known as campus representatives. Hey and the costume they wear are inspired by uh, individual uh, dresses within the campus. These looks were created to be cool. Well, how cool does it have to be in California? True. Uh, while helping to ground guests in the immersive storytelling of the land. Campus representatives at Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure and spider suppliers, will wear pieces that feature modern techie emblems and materials made of lightweight, breathable fabrics with stretch for movement and flexibility. Let's hope so. After all, they have to catch that robot before he hits the ground. hey -o. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, over at the uh, PIM Test Kitchen, featuring Impossible, they will take on a unique piece like the PIM Pocket Protector, the lab coat, the hat, the tie, giving a nod to the growing and shrinking science used to create a shareable bites and sweets in this location. These costumes feature a large PIM particle uh, on the hat and much smaller patterns on the tire. On the tire. Nice. And I saw this. So they're actually going to be wearing like a hard hat. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's not mm. going to be nice outside. <laughs> That'll be pleasant. Yeah. So hopefully most of those people will be on the inside, like the cashiers and things will be on the inside wearing the hard hat right. thing. I'm hoping. Right. Disney. If you don't want to kill anybody from heat exhaustion, <laughs> just saying. They've worked all that out. Uh, yeah. They probably poked holes in it. You'll be fine. It has all You'll be fine. You'll have, it'll, it'll, Why it'll, is Timmy yeah. passing out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got the hat on. Uh, the campus uniform also includes cargo bottoms, a training short, and a tactical inspired vest that are comfortable, lightweight, and breathable so that the cast are ready to take on any mission that comes their way. At the ancient stadium, costumes layer unique pieces that they cast uh, a dramatic silhouette with the rich textures and sewing techniques inspired by the mystic arts. That must be for Doctor Strange. Yeah, apparently. Uh, and then last but not least, the campus rep representatives at both food carts and Avenger campus will gear up in colorful aprons. That's the apron thing I was talking about. Uh, one is inspired by a classic New York City food cart for the Schwammer place, 
and the other inspired uh, by the second anchor attraction in the land, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, for the Tehran treats. Hmm. So there you go. They're very nice. cool looking uh, outfits, I'd say. Yeah. Well, you know, they're they're over in California. They get all the fun stuff. Yeah. They're closer <laughs> to the source material. I'm not jealous. Yeah. Maybe a little. Okay, fine. I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, news from the hotels of Disneyland Resort. Disney's Paradise Pier hoping. Oh, <laughs> Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel will reopen on June 15th, and more restaurant dining will be returning to Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa. Guests can get ready to enjoy summer fun at the Disneyland Resort. Thank God, uh, as we as Disney continues to re. To, <laughs> As Disney continues to phase reopen the hotels of the Disneyland Resort, uh, we get to announce uh, that Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel will reopen and welcome back guests starting on June 15th with limited capacity, of course. Guests can also look forward to the return of favorite dining locations, including Napa Rose and Storytellers Cafe. Happening on May 28th of this year at Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa. Cannot wait. Disneyland uh, Paradise Pier Hotel is a celebration of Disney's beachfront heritage, inviting guests to ride a wave of relaxation from the charming seaside themed rooms all the way up to the exciting rooftop pool and water slides for fun in the California sun. This property is located right in the middle of the magic at the Disneyland Resort. Just steps from Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure Park. Guests can book room reservations starting last Sunday. Is that nice. right? No, last Wednesday. Yeah. Whatever the sixth was. I don't know. Uh, and make Disneyland Paradise Pier Hotel their perfect summer destination. As part of the phased reopening, Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel will not have food or beverage offerings initially. However, hotel guests may visit any of the nearby dining outlets at Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa, such as the GCH Craftsman Bar and Grill, Hearthstone Lounge, Storytellers Cafe, and Napa Rose Restaurant, plus the many innovative food and beverage offerings throughout downtown Disney District. Select restaurants in the downtown Disney District also to provide delivery services for added convenience guests of disney's paradise pier uh hotel and disney's grand californian hotel and spa nomenclature can scan qr codes right off their in-room tv to access the links to those restaurants delivery pages and order food and beverages that can be delivered right to the hotel lobbies let's pause for just a second mm. dear disney world when, when can we expect to have this? No, no, dear Disney World. Uh, uh, when can we expect to have this? Yeah, on the East Coast. Yeah, I will I tell would you. Love if you can, to be, yeah, go ahead. if you can do any of this mobile ordering, you're going to have to do it early in the day and pick your time slot that you're going to want this food, because the way it works is, you open the app and they'll only tell you you can have food delivered or picked up at these certain times. That's all that's left. So if you know at a certain time, like in the morning, that you're going to want pizza delivered to your room, do it in the morning. Set your time. Place the order. You can always change your mind, but have the order placed. At least have yourself an option. You right. can always change. Just right. Say. Uh, Disney's Grand Californian is reopening popular dining locations, Napa Rose, the Storytellers Cafe for guests to enjoy while staying at Disneyland Resort and will be open to non-hotel guests as well. What? Starting May 28th, guests can enjoy the warm, inviting ambiance of Napa Rose for in-person dinner. Known for its award-winning wine list, exemplary service, and delectable dining, Napa Rose will feature both the prefix Venter's menu and the a la carte selections where guests can savor wine country cuisine featuring dishes that honor California's rich culinary heritage, uh, artists and farmers, and world-famous wine makers. Guests can also enjoy hearty homestyle favorites while dining at Storytellers Cafe, offering three course meals for breakfast and dinner. Whether guests are hungry for an American Wagyu burger or craving a classic Mickey waffle, there's something for everyone's taste buds. Dining reservations are recommended and will be available for booking at a later date. So be sure to stay tuned. Character dining will not be featured. 
at this time. Uh, one other great feature is, that's returning on May 28th is Disney's Grand Californian uh, Hotel and Spa special entrance to Disney's Grand California, excuse me, Disney's California Adventure Park uh, for Disneyland Resort Hotel guests who are visiting in the park. So you'll be able to get into the theme park from the hotel yet again. That's exciting. Napa Rose with only 15% capacity is got to be and going to be spectacular. That's a bucket list. Man. I mean, you're going to get probably really good. I mean, not that you wouldn't. You're going to get better than good service now. Right. <laughs> and there's going to probably be a little less love and shove and more, you know, here, enjoy yourself. Take your time. Because we're so grateful that you're here. We're yeah. so grateful to be able to be here. Yeah. We only have 15% of you here. <laughs> yeah. Odds are. I don't know. Yeah. I can't speak for California as a whole, but I know that's the way they were here in Walt Disney World. Yeah. So it, it's going to be uh, pretty good. If my, uh, I'm going to have to reach out to some of my California friends and have them take pictures and stuff. So, right. Uh, here in Walt Disney World, we have three spectacular food places opening up. Number mm. one, Chef Mickey. Starting May 16th, six days from now, start your box. Uh, they will offer an all-you-care-to-enjoy family style that will include no touch, no touchy. No touchy. No touchy appearance, like <laughs> snapping a selfie or waving hello to Mickey and some of his favorite pals uh, making surprising appearances in each of the dining rooms, similar to the other character locations like Topolino. If you've been there, it's kind of a parade of you mm -hmm. know characters. They go to their four different locations, they stop, they wave, and then they're gone. Uh, guests will take home a souvenir with uh, character signatures and colorful artwork. Uh, seeing a favorite character isn't all uh, guests can look forward to at Chef Mickey's. The dinner menu will include items for the whole family, like the starters of Chef Mickey's Caesar, uh, citrus poached shrimp salad, and assorted breads. Main course will include some gnocchi, roasted garlic, potato gratin, plant-based farro, with wheat, fried rice, prime rib, roast turkey, and salmon, and a sort of sweets to top off the menu. Little ones can enjoy mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, turkey, corn dogs, mm. and so They're much more. Next up, the beloved Cape May Cafe is opening. <gasps> yes! If you've ever dreamed about escaping to the beach and enjoying all the delicious food in an oceanside town, well, then you'll be happy to know that Cape May Cafe and Disney's Beach Club Resort will open on May 18th. A New mm. England-style restaurant is the perfect location to refuel after a long day in the park. Uh, guests returning to Cape May, uh, Cape May Cafe will find old favorites and new changes. Uh-oh. Take it easy. No, the no. Don't change what ain't broken. Mm -hmm. Along with its signature service and quality, the restaurant will serve breakfast and dinner, but Minnie's Beach Bash character breakfast and seafood and more dining buffet will not return at reopening. Dang it. That's not to say that there aren't plenty of treats in store. The all-you-care-to-enjoy family-style breakfast menu will feature popular, uh, popular staples like pastries, uh, including the layered crispy cream-filled lobster tail. And that's not a lobster tail as in a lobster tail, but a lobster right. tail as an Italian dessert. Omelets and Mickey waffles. Highlights from the dinner will include the uh, house-made house -made Parker rolls with cornbread and a seafood boil with a variety of fresh seafood. It's not like the crab legs. I just want the crab no. legs. Yeah, I'm kidding. The turf platter uh, with steak and chicken and lobster mac. Bookings for both of those begin on May 7th. And not to be left out is Dust Grouse. The wow. Guest favorite character dining location at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park, Tusk Grouse Restaurant, will be open this summer during a modified character experience. 
Uh, guests will enjoy delicious family-style entrees inspired by the flavors of Africa and can snap photos from six feet away of Donald Duck and friends dressed in their safari best as a promenade through the restaurant. Uh, we'll share more about the menu and the reservation as soon as more information is available. So there you go. Three as we're talking, restaurants opening. As we're what talking about it, uh, I can book uh, Chef Mickey's for the 30th. I'd rather go to Cape. Yeah, I'm working on Cape May. I can't find any Cape May open. Keep but, digging. Uh, I'll keep digging, bro. Even a weeknight. Pick a weeknight. Obviously not a Monday. I think we're a little occupied. <laughs> yeah, we are usually occupied uh, during the proverbial weeks. But um, did they say, is Kate May doing breakfast or is it only dinner? Uh, Kate May is doing breakfast and dinner. <clears throat> Let's see. We're a Kate May breakfast fan. So, oh, oh got it. Oh, my God. Uh, we're booked. Breakfast at a good time for you. Noon. Dang it. They just said it was un- unavailable. Like, literally, I had it. Now it's gone. Yeah. If you don't hit the button immediately on those things. <laughs> Dang it. Gum it. Oh, wait. Got it. Got it. Oh, yeah. I got it. I got it. All right, good. It, it was unavailable, and then all of a sudden it cleared through, so I booked the reservation. So, yeah. All right. I'll tell you after this is over right. with. Yeah, shoot me <laughs> the listen to the show is like, you bastards. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you got kids listening, I apologize. Now I have to explain what a bastard is. I am so sorry. Uh, all right. So let me go back up here. I apologize. I've, I've gone. I've been in a. Uh, I've been in a Windows uh, set all day, and I just went and scrolled, and I went the wrong way because I'm on my Mac now. Hey, we just got done recording a bunch of Patreon shows. If you like how we do the show here, you'd like to support this nonsense, come on over to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon. Seriously, no, I'm just kidding. You know how we roll. Uh, we want to thank all of our patrons. They help keep our show up on the air, and they help us do some of it like Tony's going to be talking about here in a little bit. But we have uh, basically a several levels you can support the show. And for each monthly level, you get some rewards. Plus, we do up to three shows that you can only hear over on Patreon for our Patreon supporters. There's even a level where you can get all three shows. And, well, not this one, but the cool Disney by the numbers t-shirts. Uh, so go check that out. And Patreon's even got it to where you can support us for a full year and you can save 10%. Plus, we're still running the opportunity to level up where you can go from like the $5 to $10 or $10 or higher. Or just sign up and you get a free Pixar hat from us. Uh, so please go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon and uh, sign up today and become a Patreon to get in on all of those good rewards. Yep. Uh, May 29th, we're still heading to the AMC Theater for a movie. Uh, we may have to be flexible on the Saturday or Sunday, I've noticed of uh, recent. Seems like the private theater thing is booking up. So uh, as soon as that window opens up, uh, I checked again this weekend and uh, still nothing for May 29th yet. But stay tuned. It's coming soon. Uh, and you're going to have to, you know, do it quickly because um, we can only take 20 people. So that's going to go pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, June 12th, we're doing lunch with the former Imagineer Brian Collins. Uh, you can go do that right now at the website on the screen. It's dppwithbrian.com eventbrite.com uh, and the seats are going there are only four seats left so if you want one for saturday june 12th at the boathouse we're gonna have lunch at the boathouse we're paying for brian you pay for whatever you eat you don't even have to eat you want to have just a cocktail and an appetizer that's on you we're we're down with that we don't care uh, but come join us. It's going to be uh, Saturday, June 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, August 7th, uh, we're going to Ravello over at the Four Seasons. More details will come as soon as that booking window opens up and I can uh, reserve our table. Uh, I will do that. I should probably just call them and just get it over with. It'll probably be yeah. easier. Yeah. 
I have people. Um, and then December 11th, uh, don't forget <laughs> to mark your calendars. If you're going to be in town, we're going to have a monorail crawl. Um, and I think most things should be uh, rocking and rolling uh, by Christmas. So yep. I think uh, we'll have a lot of the COVID in the rear view window. So, yeah. All right. Last week, it was an interesting trivia question. Uh, I was shocked that most of you knew this. I was like pleasantly shocked. <laughs> so the question was, what was Andy's uh, address uh, of his family that he moved to at the end of Toy Story? So, you know, they're packing up to move and they were going to 234 Elm Street. 234 Elm Street. And Julie G is the winner. It went in the mail today, Julie. Uh, so nice. that is good. Is that the same address for Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't. Know. Let me look that up. You keep talking. Hey, I'll you, look it up. You, you look. I'll. I'll, I'll talk. Uh, this week's trivia question is this: Which Disney princess had the least amount of things to say or lines in the entire film? So, which princess? Disney Princess had the least amount of lines throughout their entire film. And I was kind of shocked. I thought it was something else, but shocked to find out that it was this. If you think you know the answer, send that to us at Disney Parks Podcast at gmail.com. Mm. I think it is the same house. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I shall kill Fred. you in your nightmares. No, 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 no. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser at Walt Disney World in Florida will take guests to a galaxy far, far away for an all immersive two night vacation experience that goes beyond anything Disney has ever created before. Now, what does all immersive mean? Well, there's a new lightsaber. Uh, in a video, you could see a Ray holding in her hand, created by Walt Disney Imagineering Research and Development. Guests who experience the Star Wars Galactic Cruiser will be the first to see it in action, along with so much more starting in 2022. With this amazing new two night adventure uh, debuting, guests will watch. You can see the actual. Have you seen this video yet, by the way? Uh huh. Uh huh. I oh. watched it in a loop. Like, you watch the lights activate before your eyes it's not like one of those things where you throw the thing out and it goes yeah. she literally holding it holding this thing in front of her face she clicks the button and it goes and i'm like i'm six i'm a six-year-old kid yeah uh so you can watch it right before their eyes um from the moment you arrive to the moment you depart, you'll be plunged into a Star Wars story where th uh, the decisions that you make and the actions that you take or even the casual conversations that you have determine how your personal journey unfolds. I cannot wait to see how that works. Guest adventures begin at the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Terminal at Walt Disney World, where guests will gather with fellow passengers before departing for their intergalactic destination. Guests will soon enter a special launch pod and leave their world behind as they make a hyperspace jump to a galaxy far, far away. Guests will watch through viewports as they approach the massive and magnificent Halcyon Star Cruiser, which will be their home for the next two nights for a limited time. Time. Disney's Hollywood studio guests can now see a model of the ship on display inside Walt Disney Presents. When the launch pod's airlock slides open, guests will take their first steps into a galaxy far, far away. How many times can you say galaxy far, far away? As Star Wars Galaxy uh, Galactic Cruiser, for the first time in forever. forever comes to life all around them. During their stay aboard the glamorous ship, guests may interact with an eclectic group of characters, both familiar and new, possibly including the Star Cruiser's strong and charismatic captain, a plucky ship's mechanic, and a galactic superstar who can captivate an entire room with the crook of one jewel-encrusted purple twillick finger. Uh, the singing sensation will be featured performing during one of the exquisite dining experiences inside the Crown of Corellia dining room, which you can see in the artist concept. Uh, the enticing supper club's name is an homage to Corellia, 
uh, the planet known Corellia. Yeah. The planet known for galax- galaxy wide for starships uh, that gave us not only Halcyon Star Cruiser, but also the Millennium Falcon. Uh, the dining room is a bright and welcoming hall that will offer breakfast and lunch to passengers before transitioning each evening into a lavish, multi course menu of both otherworldly and familiar origins. At, meaning the adults get to eat weird stuff and the kids get mac and cheese and chicken fingers. As the journey continues, guests will have the opportunity to train in the ancient ways of the lightsaber, learn more about the inner workings of the Halcyon Star Cruiser, and even jump on a transport to the planet Batu to further their adventure inside Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. This isn't storytelling, it's story living. That's a hell of a name. That's a new great marketing buzzword, story living. Story living where guests will see, feel, and live Star Wars in a whole new way. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, we'll have Disney will have so much more to share about Star Wars Galactic Cruiser in the future. Uh, as we look to the 2022 debut, you can visit Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser.com for more details and sign up to receive updates. Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't uh, open up the My Disney Experience app, they have it on the map. Really? And just for shits and giggles here, kids. Oh, yeah. Let me go. Uh, this is the audio show, bro. Yep. Right? We're gay enough. Look at that. It's a little Ewok hidden in the picture. hey A little Ewok That's hidden awesome. down there. So it's on the map. I'm just saying. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a whole year away, and it's on the map. I love it. All right. Uh, Disney World is going to phase out temperature screenings. I think they phased it out, threw it out already. Yeah. Uh, the Walt Disney World Resort is getting ready to phase it out all on screen. So here is their official statement. Uh, Temperature screening. Since the reopening, we have considered guidance from public health authorities, government agencies, and our own team of health and safety experts as we assess and update health and safety measures to help prevent the spread of the COVID. Uh, As this guidance continues to evolve and with the support of local and government officials, they are making some additional adjustments following the advice of the CDC and their own local health officials. So they will take the advice of local health officials. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Uh, We will phase out the on-site temperature screenings at Walt Disney World Resorts for all guests and cast members beginning May 8th. And then guest uh, cast members on May 8th and guests on May 16th. Uh, So make sure. And this is the reason you need a travel agent. Because when these things change, you're going to want to know. And they can shoot you an email or text and say, hey, by the way, go look at the new no before you go uh, procedure. So just the same. Sweet. Uh, in in one of our Patreon shows this week, we were talking all about masks and, you know, where we kind of sit on it. Um, so yeah, yep, sweet. Um, the uh, is it gelateria or gelateria? Gelateria, I think I go both ways on that. So, the gelateria gelateria Toscana now serving Italian gelato at Epcot. Dizzy fans with a sweet tooth and a love of gelato will want to grab their spoons and head to the Italy Pavilion at Epcot to partake in the treats being served up at the Gelateria Toscana. How'd I do? Pretty good. Thanks. It's a tribute to one of, thank you. It's a tribute to one of Epcot's favorite indulgences, Italian gelato. A ribbon cutting for the new walk-up window has just been held. Uh, on hand was Mickey Mouse, Bob Wilson, group president, uh, Delaware North, uh, Car. Tika Rodriguez, Vice President of Epcot, and uh, Mahmoud Dahani, Dahani, yeah, Dahani, Vice President, Operating Participants Department at Walt Disney World. Uh, Gelateria uh, Toscana will serve Tuscan inspired sweet treats, including uh, house made gelato. The gelati is served in cups uh, or waffle cones or as floats. 
Weird. I've never heard of a gelato float. Uh, there are also some special gelati creations. Adults aren't left out. Uh, they might enjoy a sangria smoothie or some Italian beer or wine, Tony. Of course, some famous Italian coffee is also on the menu. Thank you. The walk-up window is currently scheduled to be open from 12.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. You'll find it in the walkway between the Italy Pavilion and the American Adventure. Sounds like fun. Sweet. Cannot so, wait. As soon as I get my pass back. <laughs> uh, be careful what you ask for because it's back. So the yeah. Disney College program is going to restart. Uh, application started May 5th. Uh, I, I am sure it crashed the internet. It had to uh, at least crash their site. I am sure everybody and their mother was trying to get in. Oh, yeah. Uh, and in another move that makes us wonder why uh, Walt Disney World is getting ready to increase capacity in the parks, uh, participants in the 2020 Disney College program have just been invited to return as soon as next month, even uh, if their program ended early or was suspended. And the good news is they're going to these nice, new, shiny apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to the slumlords uh, over mm -hmm. at the old place. So that's the good news for these kids. They left the slums, and now they're going to luxury. Moving on up nope. <laughs> to the east side. Uh, as an exciting change uh, is the ability uh, requirements have been modified to allow those who missed out last time the ability to apply, including people who graduated while the program was suspended. So even if you're done with college, you can go sign up. All right. That's great. That's how desperate Disney is for people to come down here and work. I'm just saying. Yes. I'm just saying. They're crazy desperate. Uh, the new eligibility rules also state that students must currently be enrolled in college or taking college classes. They need to have completed at least one semester or graduated within 24 months of the application posting date. Those who join the Disney College program now will be the first to live in the new Flamingo Crossing Village Complex. Disney is modifying the occupancy of these units and will allow vaccinated participants the opportunity to live with other vaccinated participants. So, so there you go. There you go. Sweet. I, Exciting. Yeah, I am. I have vaccine, will travel. This is all why, you know, there's this thing that June is going to be, you know, when things start really popping and going. Yeah. So, yeah. The Walt Disney Company uh, has been unveiling new Disney princess themed hospital gowns. This what? I, hospital gowns. Yeah. I, I wouldn't think about that. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, in collaboration with Starlight Children's Foundation, Disney's launched a new line of Disney princess themed hospital gowns and paints uh, and pants to help inspire courage and empowerment in kids experiencing a hospital stay. Well, let me ask you a question. I, I have not read this article, mm -hmm. so I don't know what the answer is, but they do have something for little boys, right? Just in case a boy doesn't want to dress up like a princess. No. They're just okay. for princesses. The Walt Disney Company and Children's Starlight Foundation know how daunting it can be for kids undergoing a hospital stay, and that is accurate, Jeez. Uh, especially the moment when they have to trade their normal clothing for a hospital gown. To ease that transition, the two companies have collaborated towards a new line of Disney princess-themed gowns and pants. The princess line is inspired by the iconic and heroic characters Ariel, Belle, Cinderella, Mulan, Tiana, who joined existing Starlight gowns themed to Elsa, Anna, oh, and Olaf from Walt Disney Pictures' animated movie Frozen. So, yeah. The program is part of a long-standing partnership dating back to 2001, which includes the Star Wars Force of Change Virtual Reality Initiative. Princess Line joins previous hospital wear collections launched in 2017 themed to Disney characters. Oh, here we go. Such as Mickey Mouse and Goofy, plus Star Wars characters and Marvel superheroes. Uh, sorry, didn't mean to be so quick to pull that trigger. I had to ask. I'm curious. Uh, more than four, 140,000 Disney themed starlight gowns have been delivered to the hospitalized children uh, since the start of the program, helping to quote reimagine the journey for seriously ill children and their families. 
and each gown is designed with snaps and ties. Ooh, nice. Tony's got a picture of it online. They really look cool. Yeah. Uh, snaps and ties that provide better coverage and allow for easier access during medical procedures. Along with hospital wear, Disney's also delivered over 60,000 care packages containing toys, books, and games that provide a sense of normalcy and comfort comfort during children's stays. The Disney Princess Theme Hospital wear will be donated to children's hospitals in the U.S. later this year. To learn more, go to starlight.org slash Disney. This is one of those times when I'm proud to be a Disney shareholder. Yeah. But That's great. None of those in the picture look like they were for guys. <laughs> it, no. it, if you're going to no, but- have them for guys, then you know at least throw up an image or two. So the... Well, I mean, you know, they 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 said they got Star Wars. They've got mm-hmm. you know some guys like Olaf is one. So they'll probably have, you know, um, if they have Princess and the Frog, they'll probably have the Frog, or they'll mm-hmm. have the Alligator, or you know, I don't want to be quick to judge, but I was just curious. Yeah. Oh, Pennsylvania. Oh no. <laughs> uh hey celebration of festival of the lion king uh reopen uh it's about Best time on. we get the show back <laughs> so celebration of the festival of the lion king at disney's animal K- uh, kingdom uh started on uh may the 15th well we'll start on may 15th they've already had some soft openings and i think some media preview kind of stuff uh Outside the theater, the queue is marked, obviously, with social distancing. All members of your party must be present when you enter the queue. And if you want to leave the queue, you need to let a cast member know. So if you got to go tinkles or get a drink. If you got to go to the tinkle tinkle. Right. Uh, the theater that housed the Festival of the Lion King now only seats 400 people, not 1,200 people. Due to the social distancing measures, the bleachers that made up the first two rows have been removed. Oh. I guess are also separated on the bleachers by social distancing markers, six feet or maybe three now. We don't really know. Uh, the show is just as spectacular as before. However, there are some minor changes. Audience participation is no longer a part of the shoe, shoe due to health and safety requirements. Sounds about right. How is no me... kicking the kids to run around and, and play? Okay, right. Uh, the monkey acrobats are also missing from the show. Instead of no some, tumble uh, monkeys. Instead, some new reptile characters have been integrated into the show. Uh, the aerial bird scene, where you can uh, hear the song "Can I Feel the Love Tonight," has also been removed due to the social distancing restrictions. I guess they can't be that what? close to each other on the little oh thingy, oh uh, the ring. The characters still perform the number, but now it's more of a ballet. <laughs> okay. Uh, the musical numbers are still the same uh, and amazing. The animal floats are still uh, uh, stunning. Uh, the fire dancer is still there. Uh, you can find show times on the website or on your My Disney Experience app. Uh, it's currently 12.30, 1.30, 5, and 6 p.m. That's quite a lot of shows yeah. uh, coming back to life. So, well, you got one, two, three, four, people. five. Yeah. 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 More show, she, more people. Yeah. The fire guy, because, you know, every time he breathes, you know, yeah. it burns COVID up. So. Yeah. It burns the COVID. Yeah. Everybody should have flames at that point. 